welcome everyone. We are here to present our knowledge regarding navigating challenges, opportunities in cloud to edge delivery. So what we are going to discuss today, uh, we will see uh, where the customer are today, what are the challenges that the customer uh, has today in delivery this kind of, uh, in this kind of scenario, where the customer want to be, and the challenges that we need to be solved, and uh, how the technology can uh, come to rescue the customer in this journey. So I present uh, Giuseppe that will speak with me. Hello Giuseppe everyone, Magnotta. Giuseppe Magnotta. Italian. I'm a specialist solution architect in Red Hat. Basically, I'm um, uh, operating in EMEA, especially in defense and public sector. My background is mainly related to software development. Hope that today you have some inspirational uh, talk. And uh, I am Andrea Bozzoni. I'm uh, located in Rome. I'm uh, from the EMEA's, EMEA Black Belt team regarding the uh, managed OpenShift solution, ROSA, ARO, and OSD on uh, GCP and AWS. So, uh, where are our customers today? Uh, let's say that the customer until a few years ago were uh, uh, comfortably sitting in their course IT system, and uh, during the time they start to collaborate with cloud, to go to the cloud, they start to go to the cloud and collaborate with partners. And uh, there are some customers that need to deliver their, their, their workload in the edge, uh, that are where that are uh, let's say appliance that uh, has uh, less computing power than the core, but they need to be close to the data that they need to process. And to reach uh, the edge, uh, there are different systems like the near edge that are small uh, IT system that are uh, outside the core but close to the edge, and there are the far edge that there are the appliance that are many different kind of appliance that the customer needs to manage uh, and to communicate with. So there are different kind of, of partner between this, uh, um, this three kind of environment. And even, uh, for example, to deliver software between all these environment, there are different technology and the, the customer needs different skill. And uh, this is the main problems that we find today. Even to get back information from the far edge to the near edge and to the core. So what are the challenge, uh, what are the decider, the, 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 the things that the customer decide more? They would like to build a loop using the same technology in order to distribute software, configuration, machine learning model, controls, command for all this kind of environment and uh, appliance that they have. Even transfer operational data, telemetry and events from the far edge to the near edge to the core using the same set and stack of technologies. So we, uh, we, um, we identify uh, this challenge that we are going to solve. So we need a unified technology, uh, build software in a secure way, distribute software in a secure way, and manage the deployment at the edge. So let's start with the unified technology. So we have the op development, operation, security, data science, all these kind of actors that uh, uh, need to deliver, uh, to use system, IT system, and deliver IT system um, in a, in a, in a, um, using the same technology. No? So we would like to unify the technology for all these kind of uh, actors that uh, are using our system. So this means that uh, we want to unify also the skill for this. So what is the technology that help us to reach this uh, target? So we have Linux container. Linux container can be built in every system and can be delivered and run in every system that is based on Linux operative system. The second challenge to solve is to build software in a secure way. In a secure way. What does it mean this? This, this means that today uh, the main source of attack uh, from, uh, from hackers start to be the libraries. So we want to be sure that the libraries that we use in our application are trusted libraries from trusted source. So we need to verify we need to find a way to verify that the, the library are coming from trusted source in, in, a, in, a, in a standardized way. So to do this, we, use, uh, we would like to use the trusted secure software supply chain. That is a, a, a process that allows us to code, build, deploy, and monitor um, our application. But what is interesting here is the application libraries. So we would like to use the... <clears throat> the um, public, uh, private public uh, key infrastructure in order to sign 
the libraries and to verify the signature of the libraries. And it's important in this, in this context is the SBOM, the software bill of material that allow, that is, a, let's say, a deployment descriptor, is a descriptor, sorry, that allow us to list for every application that we are going to deliver all the libraries that are included in our application. And the, the version of the, the each, the, the, also the, the version of the library that are in, the, in, the, in the our application. This allow us quickly to, in case of some uh, libraries that we are using that is in some way uh, not um, is, um, tampered but by some hacker and, uh, or for, for some other reason, if we have security, um, CVA, this kind of CVA security uh, problem, we can identify really quickly all the software that we deliver with that application library and to apply really quickly all the fixes that we need. And then we come to the next challenge for distribute for distribute the software in a secure way. So, uh, Giuseppe, would you would like to, to speak to us about this? Sure. So, till now, we have a unified technology, a common platform. You can use wherever you want. You can build software in a secure way, so you trust your libraries, your source. You, you build a container, so you have an artifact. And now, the main challenge is ship the artifact outside of the perimeter of your data center, toward the edge and be sure that nobody modified the application in transit. Because uh, what happens in, if uh, on an edge device you run a, a tampered application that is uh, uh, modified data or is uh, reporting back data to secure data to another headquarters. So you want to prevent this, especially uh, because you are not in the perimeter of your typical data center. No, you are on the field. Edge means going on the field. So, uh, the trusted supply chain can be extended as the output in order to, pro to provide technology in order to verify that what you are shipping was not modified in transit. And this means the uh, CICD pipeline, typically, after producing the container image, the application, is also able to apply a signature. So uh, an algorithm that is able with public infrastructure to produce um, a fingerprint that you can ship along your application and save it uh, in a container registry. So basically, the application plus the signature can be stored wherever you want in an image registry outside your infrastructure. And when you move the application and the signature toward the edge device, anyone can verify that the image was the same as the one built in the core. So this prevents uh, any type of hijacking to the, to the application code. But uh, in some context, uh, digital signature is not enough. And basically what you need is also attestation. Attestation is a process that is able to do a sort of snapshot to the build, to the CICD pipeline, and save it in a particular uh, third party repository that anyone can inspect. So basically, Imagine that you download an image, you do the verification with the signature, but you want also to check which server built that application with which configuration. So basically, this is the attestation, and it's very useful when you have a system integrator in, uh, involved in the process. So they provide you uh, an application, and you want to verify that their system is secure and all, and produce this kind of, uh, uh, of artifacts. And finally, the, the latest challenge is a sort of summary. So this means managed deployment in this hybrid infrastructure. What we said initially is we want that people with the same skill is able to operate in this hybrid infrastructure. And this is a sort of uh, asking those people to operate in this hybrid infrastructure with the same skill. So they are able to build an application and deploy in the core, in the cloud, or toward the edge device uh, with the same technology. The discussion can be quite deep because when you go in, uh, toward the edge, sometimes you need to involve physical devices. Uh, in this example, we, we selected drones, but can be autonomous vehicle, can be a traffic light, can be anything. And this means that since uh, the factory of the device produced, you need to create a sort of relationship, secure relationship with, the, with this device, because you are exposing your infrastructure to a, um, an external party, no? the, the provider of this device. And this means that you need a sort of protocol 
to create a secure layer in order to deliver the operating system, the configuration, because sometimes you require sensible configuration to, to set up the operating system. And when the container runtime is ready to host your application, you can use GitOps, for example, to deliver your application. FDO is the central part of this. FDO is a, an open specification built with the community by FIDO device, uh, FIDO Alliance, sorry. And basically, uh, Fedora, the operating system, the open source operating system, is including FDO in order to start a device in a secure way, install the operating system, create a, a, a security relationship with device, and then you can deploy anything. Now, after the discussion, which are the technology that allow this to be alive for, for our customer? We selected many technology as a foundational layer. For example, for the unified technology, we talk about containers. There is an open specification, OCI, Open Container Initiative. Basically, anyone that is want to be compatible with this specification is required to uh, implement something. And basically, you can use Podman, Docker, Rocket, the, the container runtime that you prefer. The, the good thing is a container built to be OCI compliant can run on any container runtime available. But when you have hundreds or thousands of containers to manage in, in production, you don't do it manually. So you need an orchestrator. You know there is Kubernetes, but uh, if you need a, a developer platform, there is OKD. The, uh, the open source uh, uh, community of a famous uh, container platform. And this is for the unified technology. Regarding build software in a secure way, we selected uh, the serverless CICD system that can run on Kubernetes, that is Tecton. And Tecton is uh, extended with uh, Tecton Chains, so that is a sub-project that basically give you the management of the complexity of applying the digital signature and attestation in order to run a pipeline without any human intervention. So uh, the process that we described before is hidden from the, uh, the user that started the pipeline. And Tecton is using another open source project that is called Cosign. Cosign allows you to create a digital signature of pipeline create attestation and save it in a repository. And the repository can be used by the distribution software way. The, this uh, repository is called Record. That is a part of this six store project. And basically is a, uh, a repository that anyone could inspect in order to verify how the application was built, how the pipeline was produced. And when you have specific policy to be applied because uh, you, you can create any kind of policy. So a specific uh, um, public key should be used to run this specific application on this specific device. When you have these rules to be implemented, you can use the enterprise contract. That is another project that allows you to build those kind of policy and deploy in your hybrid infrastructure. And finally, to manage in a in a simplified way, this hybrid uh, system, you can use, of course, Ansible. You could rely with an operating system implementing security features such as Fedora, based on FIDO Alliance specification, and you can use GitOps to deploy and update application in, uh, in this uh, hybrid cloud. Specifically, Argo CD is one of the most famous projects to be used. So this was the first part of our talk on uh, the discussion, how level perspective on what can be achieved, how can we solve our customer challenges. Now there is a demo time. Unfortunately, uh, in 35 minutes, we can show all the features that can be applied, but we selected a subset of the, the discussion to be shown. And in particular, we have two videos. We decided to record. Uh, in, my original idea was to bring uh, uh, an edge device here to show you that everything was running. But you know, the, the god of demo are not always uh, keen to, 
to, to perform well, so I recorded this. Okay, so the first video relates on how we can build an application in a secure way with a pipeline. So this is an, an OKD uh, product based, uh, you know, it's OpenShift. In OpenShift, uh, we created uh, a pipeline. There is a, a project, okay, of course, that is called Hello Tomcat. So we want to show you how to build a simple Tomcat application in a secure way. This is uh, the listener in order to expose our API to third party, but the idea was to show you that the system is empty. This is the image registry, internal image registry of OpenShift, and there are no tags. So there is no application currently hosted. And we are using also a public registry that is Quay.io that is empty. Now we jump to the pipeline. This Hello Tomcat is quite simple, but is using most of the concept that we discussed till now. So there is fetch repository, so download the source code, build the application, generate the software bill of material, perform a vulnerability scan on this, on this bomb, not on the container image, because once you have this bomb with the content of the application, you can use that one to do a, a vulnerability scan. Finally, we do a simple deploy in this namespace, and at the end, we export the image, the signature, and the attestation to the Quay.io, so to the public registry. So here, I manually, I start the pipeline, but uh, you know, you can uh, configure the, the webhook in order to call the public endpoint after a git commit. And basically, this is a typical uh, pipeline. So we download the source code, we do the build. This is a Java build with uh, uh, a source to image container, so it's very, very common. Here I'm not using a repository to store the libraries, but in, in, in reality, I should have a repository hosting libraries that my developers should use or must use, not import anyone from, uh, from the, 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 the internet. So I generate the source below material, do vulnerability scan, so every, everything is okay. I'm deploying the application, and finally, the last step is export the image, the signature, and the attestation from the internal registry to Quay.io, because my distribution way is to host anything on a public instance on Quay.io. So my infrastructure is relying on this uh, uh, deployment and delivery way. So this is to show you that the application was deployed in the namespace, the image stream now is populated with a bunch of tags. In a typical scenario here, you see a single tag. Your application tagged with the latest or with a specific version. But now, look, you have Hello Tomcat latest with a hash that is beginning with 4D68. And then you have also other images with Hello Tomcat, SHA-256, and the same hash of the original one, dot .att and dot .sig. Basically, this is the convention. When you build the digital signature and the attestation, they are located in the same image registry. The name is a little different from the usual one. They, um, are equals to the hash of the image they are referring to. And basically, we need to copy those tags and export to an external Quay.io. So this is the reason why you see a bunch of images. Of course, there is also another tag that is uh, containing the source below material. So refreshing Quay.io, we have the expecting latest tag, the application, plus the other two tags. The, the hash dot sig and dot att. So this is uh, the convention on how you can distribute your application, your container image, plus signature and attestation. Of course, this container is uh, carrying an application, but uh, this can be a very generic process. You can embed uh, a document, a txt file in a container, and reuse the same way 
as a secure distribution mechanism to, to provide anything that can be modified in transit. Uh, please, questions uh, at the end. Now, this is to show you that everything is the same. So uh, there was a task in the pipeline that just copied the, the container and exported it to, to the public Quay.io. Now we'll do the verification. So I downloaded the public key of the OpenShift. So this is the public key that was used by Tecton Chains to do the verification, the signature. And using the command cosine, so this is a typical computer. It can be any Linux server. The, the only requirement is, of course, to use cosine and the public key that you want to use to do the verification. So here, the, the, the simple command, cosine, verify attestation. I want to use a specific public key, and i asking to use the salsa provenance, that is a, a protocol that uh, allows you to, uh, to select which security layer you are implementing. And then uh, the public image that you want to check. So it's quay.io, gmagnota, hello tomcat, latest. The system, what, what, what we'll do, we'll download the image, we'll download the signature of the attestation, we'll do the digital signature over the image with the public key, and it will compare the content with, with the one stored in the image registry. And in this case, everything is working perfectly, because you see the following checks were performed on, on each of those signatures. The cosine claims were validated. The claims were present in the transparency log. Signature were integrated. So all the checks are OK. And this means that this image is the one that was built in the core, and no, nobody modified it. So this is uh, uh, base64 data that you can uh, use. Now what I will do? I will delete the signature and the attestation from the quay.io. I will try to repeat the same command, but this time the process is failing because the system can't find the signature and the attestation in the repository. So this, this was to demonstrate to you that if I can copy the three items, image, signature, attestation, wherever I want in this hybrid cloud, anyone is able to verify that the image was the original one. OK. You can see here the, a shield appears when there is the, the security involved. And from a CICD perspective, this means that when a Tecton Chains digitally signed my image, it also enhanced the, the pipeline, the, the Kubernetes pipeline, with some annotation. Annotation are labels that you can put on, a, on an item. And in this case, the labels are, of course, it was signed. But there is also a URL that I can use to check that this pipeline was saved in the public record system. So here you see it's base64. There is also a uh, user interface that you can use to, to see things in a human-friendly way. But this means that going on a SIGStore, record.sigstore.dev, that is a, the transparency log, anyone is stored forever. So anyone can verify that uh, this image was produced in a particular in instant of time with a specific configuration. And this is the first part uh, of the demo. So now we have a secure application that was built and saved somewhere. The second part uh, is using an edge device and download this image. But this device was configured in a specific way. Let's see what does it means. So I will do SSH over, over this server. It's a micro shift. It's a very tiny system uh, based on Fedora with uh, a tiny version of um, OpenShift that is called the micro shift. You can see here there is a Fedora. In reality, it's uh, related to Press Linux, but it's Fedora and MicroShift uh, version 4.15. This is a typical Kubernetes, so you can see many pods, many things are running. 
And this is a, a tiny Kubernetes running on a single uh, device, single node device. Now, I said that this device was configured in a specific way, and this means that on this device, I want to run only applications that are signed with the specific uh, public key that we saw before. In order to, to have this behavior, there is a configuration that you could apply. Since uh, this is a OCI compliant system, basically there is a policy.json file that you can configure. And in particular, you can see by default, uh, insecure accept anything. So this means by default, this system will download any container image from any image registry that you want. But for only the images that are coming from Quay.io, Gmagnotta, Hello Tomcat, I want to enforce a specific policy. And this specific policy is the application, the container image, should be signed by SigStore by a specific public key that is stored in the local file system on slash root slash public key, and the signed identity should correspond to this image registry, OpenShift, uh, and so on. This is an internal OpenShift uh, uh, pink. But basically, if your company decides to use public key encryption or uh, just to use uh, um, uh, encryption without keys, so the, your user log in to a single sign-on, they create a certificate, and that certificate can be used to do the, the verification, you can write your specific policies. And basically, this means that now, if I want to run anything under Hello Tomcat path, that should be signed with that specific key. Okay. So now, show you the, the specific configuration. Okay. There is another file that we need to change. In this case, it is uh, uh, the red. Uh, default.yml uh, under the registries.d and basically this means by default uh, use SIG store attachment. So I'm telling the system, okay, by default look that under the repository there is an attachment, the dot .sig, the dot .ett attached to the original image. After this change, if I try to run manually the container with Podman, uh, remember, this is the public key that I used in, in the core. Now, the image registry is carrying only my image because I deleted in the previous step the .sig .tape. If I try to run manually with Podman, for example, this application, you can see Podman run, quay.io, Tomcat latest, the system will download the image, and it should fail immediately. Okay, so it is trying to check the hash.sig in the same repository, but it can find it because I deleted. So the system is refusing to run this image. So my policy is enforced on this system. And the same is valid if I try to run the same container image via Kubernetes. So uh, now, I'm creating, I'm creating a namespace on MicroShift. So I, try, I tested the Podman, so the, the direct way of run a container image on the system. Now I switch over the Kubernetes. So I'm trying to create uh, the namespace, the deployment, the, the usual stuff that you, you use to deliver application with Kubernetes. So this is typical config map deployment. You can see here there, there will be a deployment, YAML, typical Kubernetes stuff. Most important thing is the image is quay.io, gmagnotta, hello, tomcat latest. So applying this, checking what is happening, you see here immediately we have error image pull. The image is giving an error because the container runtime reading the policy JSON, try to apply the policy, he is not finding the signature in the registry, and then it say, I can run because I'm not sure the image was the original one built in the core. 
same error as Podman. So the, the behavior is the same. Now what I need to do, basically I need to copy back the SIG and the attestation. So I just moved again the signature attestation in the major registry. And now I'm trying to rerun the command with Podman. You see now the, the command is run immediately because the policy was satisfied. The system downloaded the signature, downloaded the attestation. In, re in reality, in this process, is only the signature the most important one. And switching back to Kubernetes, we saw that now the image was run correctly. The last part, you see here, Kubernetes, the application is running correctly. So this means that the policy that we created is enforced on the edge device. So imagine you have a fleet of devices that should run a specific application, secure application in the core. You can use this, uh, this approach. On, if you need complex policy, you can rely on uh, other, other tools such as enterprise contract that allow you to create better rules in a, in a better way. So, going back to our presentation, we finished the talk. We have time for a question and answer. They are open standard. They are saved in a container registry, the image registry. Uh, sorry, I need to repeat the question. Okay. So the signature and the attestation are created in a standard way. This is your question. Yes, but they are not just files. They are containers, images stored in the image registry in the same way as the application. So the image registry is a sort of uh, database that is collecting up, um, container, containerized application. Okay? It, it has many layers, but at the end is a tar gzipped archive. The signature is the same, is a, a hash of this content, but it's stored in the same image registry with the same technology. So from the user experience, you can use the standard tools to download the signature, upload the signature, move the signature because it's a container image. But uh, we are using this as a trick in order to extend the process. No? And the uh, signature and attestation are uh, stored in the same repository with the same tools available. Other questions? Okay, so thank you.